Well, today I have my little air compressor here that I've had, I think for about two years. And I really love this thing. I've always had the old style, really loud ones. And whenever you're working in the shop and trying to do stuff and you got the compressor in there, it's just mind numbing. And this thing is so much quieter. It's worked great for two years. I've built buildings with it and all manners of furniture and other things, but anyway. So what's been going on is I had it outside working on the house. It was freezing cold and, or whenever it got up to pressure, it just, as soon as it got up to pressure. And I wish I didn't have it tore apart. I would show you how it worked. Well, I still can, let's see. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and wire this thing up and get it where it'll go and show you what exactly is happening. So this is kind of a booger. I about broke the plastic on this, trying to get this button out. I just took a little screwdriver and pried that thing just very ever so lightly on both sides until I can pop one side out. And then this metal piece goes up in here inside the button and it also catches the little red button like so. And you gotta take this screw out right here and the whole thing lifts off. So actually the button cover lifts off and then the other button cover lifts off. So if you do break this when you're trying to get it off, I almost broke mine. And if you do, it's not the end of the world. You'll just have to operate it with this button. So all it does is it's not plugged in, so don't freak out. But it pushes this switch down to go off, which opens these contacts. And there's also a little valve down here and this really threw me for a loop, but I did a lot of research on it, trying to figure out what it could possibly be the issue. I first thought that the little valve in here that it pushes down on might be the issue. And from everything I was seeing, it's probably coming down this line. You follow that line down right there is, right that thing right there is a check valve. And from everything I've read and all the research I've done on it, that's what the issue is. So I'm gonna try to attempt to get all this apart and get that thing off of here and see if we can remedy the issue. Exactly what's happened i just unplugged it really quick because for whatever reason i may also be having another issue with it but whenever it does kick back on the motor doesn't want to kick back on so i may have some contact issues but for whatever reason you push like right now it's powered on you push the power switch off which would be pushing this button down So the only way to keep it built up is to let it pump up and unplug it. And then every time it starts to leak down when you're using a nail gun, you gotta plug it back in. So that's been my issues. And from what I've read, that's the culprit. So we're gonna find out. So first off, I gotta get this motor off. And it looks like it's got four bolts, 10 millimeter head on the bottom that go up in here. And I think that's once I get that off, There'll probably be enough flexibility in this flex hose. I'll take that flex hose off down. Let me get my hand where you can see. This hose right here. I'll take that thing off and we'll be able to get at this thing. All right, so I've got it flipped over here and just gotta take these four, loosen these four nuts right here and take the nuts off and the whole motor should come right off. All right, so I got the motor off, slid out of the way and now I can get to this line right here and get that disconnected. I almost forgot, I just pumped this thing up. All right, so I got this loosened up. I'm gonna take that off. Make sure your compressor's ran down on there. So I got that off. Now I need to get this line off. But now the motor will come about all the way out here. I need to cut this zip tie right here. Right. So I got these loosened up. And I don't know if you could even get a wrench in here. This adjustable seems to be doing pretty good. But I will try to figure out what size these are for actual wrenches for people who like to do things right. 
All right, so I got the nuts off here. I'm gonna try to do it kind of gently. And let's see. So short side down, long side up. Shouldn't be too hard to remember. All right, so this nut here is 17 and these are 12, 12 millimeter. All right, so I just have the adjustable wrench in here trying to get this thing turned. It actually has a nut on the back side. It seems to be 19 millimeter, I think, but I can't even get a wrench in there to turn it because the back side of this blocks it for the wrench. So it's a little difficult to get at, but I'm gonna try to do this gingerly and keep from messing the threads up on this thing, just in case I need this one for some reason, which I hopefully will be able to find a new one, but who knows? Ever since COVID, stuff like this has gotten pretty difficult, and if you can't find it, you're gonna pay for it. All right, there we go. Now it's coming. And again, make sure your compressor is powered off and doesn't have any air in it. And there we go. It's off. Now, what are the chances we can find a part number on this? Doesn't look good. Oh, uh, so I think I see the issue. If I can get light in here. So that thing in there, the valve inside that looks like it's supposed to seal or something, it is cocked at an angle right in there. So that's probably the issue right there. Might see if I can take this thing apart. All right, so I finally managed to get this thing apart. All right, so I have took this thing apart and cleaned it up really good. Well, pretty good. And I went ahead and stretched that spring just a little bit. And I think it just got some trash in there and kind of lodged itself at an angle. But we're going to see. I'm going to put it back together and see what happens. Okay, 19 millimeter. I'm just going to snug it back up. And there we go. All right, so got all my lines hooked back up, put some Teflon tape on that, on the check valve, and put it back in. Line hooked up up here. I took this cover off. I assume this is where the capacitor was. I just wanted to verify in case that was one of my issues. So if you got capacitor issues where your motor's not wanting to start, it's kind of on startup. It's probably your capacitor, and right there it is. So let's go put the motor back on, give her a try. All right, here we go. We're gonna try it one more time. Hopefully it works. In there. I mean, you can hear how quiet this thing is. I love it. Oh, it just tickles me pink. So. We're up there. I took the PSI down just a touch, trying to mess with it to see if maybe that was an issue. And I think we got it fixed. That just saved me a lot of money. Well, as you can see, we've got pressure. We're up to pressure. It's cut itself off and we're good to go. So that's awesome. I mean, really that's gonna save. Luckily I was able to clean that thing up check valve look I was able to clean it up and if I can get it to focus down there I was able to get that cleaned up and back working and I did go and I took a little bit of sandpaper and cleaned my contacts up up here I know at least more than once myself or my cousin has pushed the button to cut it off and it didn't cut off all the way and it just sat there and, was, and you could hear the contacts just kind of frying but anyway Hopefully, this thing will last a lot longer, and I just saved myself either a check valve or a new compressor. So, a little tinkering, and we got her fixed up. All right, so I'm gonna put everything back together. Actually, you gotta put that on, and then this piece goes in here. All right, so the screw's gotta go in first. Let me get that put in. That locks all the plastic down. And it took me about an hour to find that screw because I couldn't get that button off. And I was afraid I was going to break the button. 
So we've got the air compressor on right now to make this easier to go in. It's power unhooked, obviously. And we've just got to get this maneuvered around where it falls in like so. And then now all we got to do is get our button in. Get me a little screwdriver and kind of help bend this out just a touch, just real easy. So hopefully it doesn't break. Right, so I realized I actually had the button backwards. There we go. All right, I got it back over here in its spot. And we're going to see. I got the power on. It's cut on. All right, let's see what it does. And there we go. Oh, that just tickles me. Save me some money. That's my favorite. So I'm gonna let it go down again and we'll make sure the off switch works. There we go. See that? All right. Well, that's a short, sweet one for you and I hope this helps somebody because I didn't know where to even start on this thing. I normally just buy Harbor Freight compressors and when they go out, throw them away, get a new one. But this one, I wanted something quieter and I think it was at the time almost $300. I don't know what they are now, but you know, I didn't know what to do. So I started researching and reading and found out about the check valve and kind of went from there. And you just got to have a little initiative to start taking stuff apart and figuring it out. And eventually you'll get it or you'll find the part that you need. So I hope this helps somebody and I hope you like, subscribe. We'll see you next time.